Okay, uh, I want to start. Uh, we've got five former football players who are graduating on Friday, and I'd be remiss if uh, I didn't take an opportunity um, to talk about, you know, our mission uh, is not just about, you know, our current players. It's about former players and reaching out to our former players and, and making sure that that um, reaches them as well in terms of assisting them and, and um you know, building a bridge so they can come back and graduate as well. Jay Ward, Jacoby Stevens, Grant Delpit, um, uh, Trindon Holloway, and, and Kentravius Aubrey are all going to be uh, graduating uh, from LSU, and we're proud of those five um, for sticking to their commitment of, of earning their degree and and being part of, of what we believe is uh, our mission here, and, and that is graduating champion. So I wanted to take this opportunity to congratulate those five. And, and, and again, you know, it's sometimes difficult. Uh, you get distracted. Um, you know, your life takes a different turn, and, um, you know, priorities then change. But great to see these guys um, uh, stick with it and, um, you know, again, uh, earn their degree from LSU. So we're, we're really proud of them. Uh, you know, practice today, obviously, we were challenging our football team uh, with the elements. Uh, we went, um, you know, past our original threshold of about an hour uh, to about an hour and 15, 20 minutes outside. The elements are what they are. They're real. Uh, but my sense is that, um, you know, we need to continue to add on to uh, our exposure outside and, um, you know, build a, a mindset that, uh, you know, obviously allows us to fight through those, those times that, uh, you know, mentally, uh, you know, we could possibly uh, lose our concentration because of the environment. And uh, I thought our guys did a pretty good job by and large. In particular, the last couple of periods were uh, a blitz pickup period, which, you know, requires a lot of intensity and um, focus and concentration. I thought they did a really good job. So made some progress um, from yesterday uh, in terms of the way we practiced. And, you know, that's what you're looking for. Um, so I'm, I'm pleased with the progress that they made from yesterday to today. Um, again, we've got a long way to go. Uh, we've got to continue to work on our conditioning level uh, in these elements. and. Looks like the uh, the weather is going to cooperate. Looking at the long range weather, I think uh, we're in for a very warm August. So I think this is going to continue, and we'll be smart. We'll be careful with our guys, um, but we're going to continue to uh, build on uh, what we need to do uh, to be ready for you know our opener in Orlando, which I can guarantee is is going to be uh, extremely warm. So. With that, I'll open up to questions. Hey, Coach, over here. Uh, Matthew Bruni with On3. Uh, the cornerback position uh, with guys like Ashton Stamps, LaTerrence Welsh getting re reps, uh, Deuce Chestnut, just what have you seen from all of them as you continue to evaluate? Yeah, I think I see what you guys see. I mean, I, I think that, um, you know, Deuce is a guy that's got a lot of football, uh, you know, power five football. Um, He's played a lot of winning football. He's competitive, smart. Um, and so you're getting, you know, you're getting a veteran player there. Um, you know, obviously, you know, he had the, the surgery, so we didn't see a lot of him in the spring. But, you know, the things that really stood out for us in our evaluation was that he was a, a smart player, savvy, short tackler, and was always around the ball, and, and that's starting to kind of show itself here in, in early on in camp. And again, we're, we're five days in, so I'm not ready to, you know, make any kind of bold statements, but he's making progress. LT is, you know, I think he's built on, you know, his, his spring performance. His spring game was outstanding. He's had a, a great um, summer, and um, he continues to, to get better each and every day. Ashton's a true freshman who put on – you know, a lot of weight. Uh, I think many of you remember us recruiting him. He was a bit, um, I would say, underweight at, at, at the position for us. And, and you know, we were um, excited about his competitiveness and his athleticism, but we 
challenged him to get after it in the weight room, and he certainly did in the off season and then this summer. And he looks the part. Um, he's doing a really good job as a true freshman. Hey, Coach uh, Michael Cobble, WBRZ. Uh, Jaden at Media Day said something which is interesting and stood out. He, he wanted part of his legacy to be that of helping us and Ricky as well. What kind of leadership are you seeing from that guy now that he's certainly comfortable, you know, where he is? Well, I think he's always been that kind of guy. I don't, I don't think I've ever seen him uh, as somebody that has been selfish or thought about himself first. And, and I would say that those two guys, Ricky and, and uh, Nuss, have been the same way. I, so I, I think um, it doesn't surprise me that I didn't hear the interview, but that those comments came out of his mouth because I've seen that from him since he's arrived here on campus. I think now that he's in much more of a vocal leadership position, I think he can articulate his thoughts and feelings a little bit more um, because he is, you know, in that starting role right now. So I don't know that he was feeling as though those were some of the things that he needed to be talking about last year. But I think he's just in a different role this year and probably just being who he was last year, but just in a different role. Hey, Coach, Matt Bascona, ESPN Radio, Baton Rouge. Can you give us an update on Jimmy Lindsay and then also how John Jancic and Bob Diaco have done transitioning with basically a day's notice? Yeah, we've, we've gotten great reports. Um, you know, Jimmy, um, I believe, is going to be released from the hospital either today or it's, it's, it's really soon. Um, there's a long road uh, of recovery ahead for him. Uh, and then there's, you know, um, you know, other things that he's going to have to um, handle um, that, you know, are, you know, personal and private for the family that they're going to have to deal with. But um, very encouraging um, just the fact that I'm able to talk about it in terms of, you know, leaving the hospital. Um, so um, really, really happy for, for Jimmy and um, certainly uh, Lauren, uh, his wife, who's been there by his side every day. So, um, you know, a, 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 g a good bit of news there that we were able to get yesterday. Um, you know, John, John's been with me. I recruited John. John played for me. Um, he was a coordinator for me, winning a national championship, coaching the defensive line, coached with me at Central Michigan, Cincinnati. Um, he's coordinated in the SEC. So you have an experienced coach who knows how to build relationships with players. Um, I don't think we miss a beat there at all. Excited about his um, ability to um, teach the techniques. And he works really well with Matt, too. So you know, you have not only somebody that has the experience, but um, you know, we saw what he did with you know, really working as an analyst. But you know, really had Howard last year, you know, Harold, excuse me. And working with Harold Perkins last year, I think you would say he did a pretty good job. So I uh, feel really good about that. Uh, Bob Diaco, again, another guy that um, has been with me at a number of different stops, um, a great teacher, um, highly energetic. Um, I know our special teams guys love coming to the meetings. Um, he brings a uh, like I said, uh, a, a great passion um, to those teams, which I think we all know the game of special teams, sometimes you need that. And um, I know that we're going to be sound fundamentally, and, and those guys are going to enjoy playing for them. Hey, Coach Jacques Doucet, WAFB-TV. Um, what was the thought process in bringing Trey Bradford back? Um, what do you expect out of him, and how can he help this team? Well, um, the thought process was just giving a man another chance, really. Um, he had a long road. I mean, he had to get back into school on his own. We didn't help him. Um, he had to do everything um, and, and, and do it on his own. And the way we left it with him was that, um, look, we're, we're open to, to second chances here. Uh, but this one is, is on you. You've, you've got to prove yourself. You've got to prove yourself to the university. 
Um, and it's going to be uh, up, up to the university to decide whether they want to re-enroll you. We're not going to make any calls. We're not writing any letters. Um, and, if, and if you understand what the guidelines are and you're able to do that, and then you come here this summer and uh, our strength coaches sign off on you that you've done everything uh, to warrant an opportunity, um, then we'll invite you to camp. And both of those things happened. So he earned, he earned a second chance. Hey, Coach. Uh, Koki Wright with the Advertiser. Uh, I, I was sort of curious with a guy like Mason Smith, how tough is it? It, how tough is it for a bigger defensive lineman like that to sort of gain, regain that confidence in his knee um, after such a serious injury? Well, I think there is a process that goes along with, with that. But I think a lot of that took place in the summer. Um, you know, we did a lot of, the players did a lot of player-led practices where, you know, he was involved in drill work and he was doing those things. So I think he vetted a lot of that out through the summer. And so when he came into camp, there hasn't been hesitation on his part. You know, it hasn't been feeling his way through it as much. I'm sure there's going to be some, you know, feeling his way out when it's the first game, you know, in a, over a year. But um, in answering your question, I think a lot of that hesitation has, has diminished because of what he did throughout the summer. Uh, he looks pretty darn good to me, yeah. Hey, Brian. Uh, Sheldon Mickles at The Advocate. Um, I know Thursday we talked to you about your young tight ends and you only had one practice now that you have five, yeah. five in. What do you see about the younger guys other than Mason Taylor? Yeah, I mean, including Mason Taylor, obviously Mason is back after the surgery where, you know, you can see the potential that he has to be you know, an All-American type player at that position. He's smart, um, runs well, great hands, understands the blocking schemes. And then, and then you look at, you know, a bunch of younger players that all have, you know, a huge upside, you know, and they all are a little bit different. Um, Mark Way, uh, you know, obviously caught the ball very well today, but, you know, he's physical in line, you know, and he gives you that version. Um, you know, I, I think you look at, at Pimpton and the size jumps out at you and the range, the catching range. Um, uh, I mean, I, I think all of them bring a little bit something different to the table, um, but all have made great progress. And I think in some fashion, depending on um, game plan and what we're doing, that they'll all get a chance to, to compete for us. Coach Bryce Coon, 24-7 Sports. We talked with Mason yesterday, and he mentioned uh, something that kind of stood out was being where your feet are. And is that a theme for this team? Is that something that you're kind of preaching of when talking about the outside noise, but just kind of being where you are today and worry, worrying about that? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's impossible today when you think about NIL and gambling and uh, transfers and all that swirling. Um, it's it's hard to even, you know, get into a process on a day-to-day -day basis if you're distracted from, from, you know, even getting there with all that's going around you. So we've, we've made, I would say, uh, a point on a day-to-day -day basis of making sure our players know why they're here. You know, why are you here? If, if it's to chase NIL, if it's to to do these things that are on the peripheral, then you're gonna be distracted from the ultimate goal. And that is to graduate and win a championship. So what centers you? And to me, what centers these guys is, is their values and their goals. And, and if they truly have values and goals, then that will center them throughout these distractions. So I think what Mason was saying is, is you know, be where your feet are, is that what's grounding to you, you know? And for these guys, it's their family, it's, it's their faith. Um, it, it's, it's certainly about, you know, wanting to be the best version of themselves.
Coach, in the middle, we're going to talk to Mike Denbrock on Thursday. I was just curious, have you seen any changes in him now that you guys have been at this stop together? Anything rejuvenating to him or anything different to him and his approach? I think just on a day-to-day -day basis, his comfort level with, um, you know, what we're doing on a, you know, from an offensive perspective, uh, I think, um, you know, he clearly knows the direction that, that we want to take, and there's no hesitancy. You know, he doesn't feel like um, he has to keep me happy or, hey, I'm doing this for you. He knows exactly what's expected, and he can go without having to uh, look over his shoulder. And because of that, he's assertive, um, makes those decisions that are in the best interest of the offense, and whether it's personnel or other, and um, you know, it makes for a great working relationship. Hey, uh, hey Brian, Glenn Wesco, 247. Just uh, with the running back room as a whole, now that you guys have five practices in, wondering if you could speak to just the rotations there. I mean, it really seems like you guys are still getting a lot of guys, a lot of reps, and um, just, just also about Caleb Jackson in particular. Who, what have you seen out of him? Well, he's big, he's physical, he's strong, but he's raw. And so a lot of the work with, with Caleb is ball security, um, low pads, the nuances of the game, which, you know, when you, when you have a physical, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't want to use the word, but a, just a, a, a guy that has that kind of prowess at the position, um, those are good things to, to work on, right? We, we don't have to worry about uh, some of the other things. So it's, it's just the details with him, and, and that's, a, that's a good thing. Um, Trey, Trey's a little bit ahead in the sense that he had the spring, so he knows the playbook a little bit better. And then a collection of experienced backs that have, um, you know, uh, a, a different style. Each one of them has a little bit that they can offer. So, look, we got one football. Um, that hasn't changed. So, you know, we'll figure it out as it goes. But um, my guess is that, you know, it always ends up coming back to the guys with the most experience end up kind of rising to the top and, and taking it over. Yeah, Brian, right here front row. Ron Higgins from the Shreveport uh, Bozier Journal. Uh, after the incident yesterday on the, on the practice field, you pulled Harold aside and talked to him for a while. What was your message to Harold about uh, that incident? We were talking about his NIL. Um, what, I think he was trying to get a John Deere NIL, and I think the two linemen already have one. Um, and he thought that was probably a good idea not to get one. Yeah. Everything that, that happens out there are teaching moments, you know? I mean, every day. I mean, I, that's like so far behind me, you know, yesterday, because they're 18 to 21 year olds. And so this morning, there were so many teaching moments um, down here in this hallway, in this locker room that I forgot about yesterday. So, you, you know, you deal with what happens in front of you. Um, and, you try to bring everything back to, um, you know, what your process is and what you're trying to develop um, in, in, in your program. And so, you know, there'll be moments uh, like that similarly in a couple of days that I'll have to deal with that maybe you won't see, you know. But every day's in, 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 in my life as a coach is a teaching experience, and so you better take your chance uh, to teach while that happens. And so we made it a teaching moment. Coach Mike Scarborough with TigerBait.com. Your battle for punt return. How do you see that stacking up? What have you seen so far? Well, I mean, I, I like what I see back there. I mean, Aaron's pretty fluid, if, if that's the right word. I mean, it comes natural to him. Um, I think yesterday, you know, Jay was kicking with the wind and, and maybe he probably could have got back on a couple of balls a little sooner, but he is really natural with the football. 
Um, Kyle Parker, I think, looks really good back there too. Um, Clayton has been really money for us. So I, I like where we are there. I feel a whole lot better than I did last year at this time. So um, I, feel, I feel really good about that and where we're going to go. And, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to... I don't want to get a, out too far, but I, I, I believe it's going to be a, a positive weapon for us and, and um, hope to see that come to fruition.